Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now we will see how we can study the expression pattern of the genes in a laboratory setup. The cDNA synthesis describes generation of complementary DNA or the cDNA from an RNA template by the process of reverse transcription. The cDNA which can be used directly as template for the polymerase chain reaction, it can be amplified using enzyme reverse transcriptase. So, in a way we can actually measure the cDNA and assess the levels of expression of a gene. So, let us start a laboratory demonstration now in which you can see uh, how to make cDNA and then use that for amplification using polymerase chain reaction. Hi, I am Swati and I am one of the uh, TAs for this course. So, uh, today I will be explaining the first few steps. Uh, that are involved in uh, cloning of a human eukaryotic gene. Uh, unlike uh, DNA, uh, the first step in the cloning procedure is isolating uh, RNA from uh, human whole blood. Uh, unlike uh, DNA, RNA is a very unstable uh, biomolecule and uh, therefore all the uh, before beginning any uh, RNA extraction experiment, uh, the surface uh, needs to be cleaned with uh, this uh, uh, chemical which is known as RNA zap which will prevent uh, the RNA from uh, degrading. So, we will uh, first clean the surface with uh, RNA zap as well as uh, all the surface which will be uh, touching any of the tubes or uh, pipettes etc. Uh, so, the protocol that we will be uh, using today for extracting RNA uh, is the phenol chloroform protocol. Uh, the reagent that we will be uh, using is uh, called uh, triazole. Uh, which is a commercially available uh, reagent. Uh, so, we will be uh, taking around uh, 200 microliter of whole blood. Uh, after adding uh, the blood, we will uh, then be adding uh, the triazole uh, reagent. So, the triazole uh, reagent basically contains phenol and guanidine thiocyanate, uh, which will help to lyse the cells and bring the cellular contents into the solution. This is then uh, mixed thoroughly. After addition of triazole, uh, the tubes are mixed nicely and then uh, centrifuged. After addition of uh, triazole and mixing the tubes uh, well, uh, we will now add uh, chloroform to the tube. the RNA has been uh, isolated and quantified, uh, the next step is uh, conversion of this RNA into the complementary uh, cDNA strand. Uh, so, for this, uh, the first step uh, involves, uh, so during the RNA extraction procedure, there are high chances of the isolated RNA having a genomic DNA contamination and therefore, the first step in uh, the uh, cDNA uh, synthesis involves removal of uh, genomic DNA contamination. So, for this we will take 
around uh, one microgram of the quantified and extracted RNA. and then add uh, the enzyme DNAs. So DNAs is the enzyme that will uh, degrade any of the uh, genomic DNA contamination that might be present in the uh, extracted RNA sample. So this is the uh, DNAs that we will be adding. We will then add a, a buffer which is compatible with the DNA's enzyme and which will uh, increase its activity. This uh, reaction is then uh, incubated at 37 degrees Celsius in the dry bath for 30 minutes. So after addition of chloroform and centrifuging the cubes, we will now uh, see that an aqueous layer has formed, as you can see. After incubating the samples overnight in isopropanol, uh, the samples were centrifuged at high speed. Uh, centrifugation at high speed will result in uh, the pelleting down of the extracted RNA. The pellet form will is then dissolved in sterile distilled water as you can see. The next step after RNA extraction is the quantification of the extracted RNA. So the quantification method that we would be using is a spectrophotometric reading at 260 nanometers and for this we would be using the U-drop plate. First the plate has to be cleaned with uh, uh, ethanol. Since the RNA was dissolved in distilled water, we would be using distilled water as a blank. So we would be taking 2 microliter of sterile distilled water. and then taking 2 microliter of our extracted RNA which is dissolved in water. The advantage of using the uh, micro drop plate is that very small amounts of uh, uh, your RNA solution is needed to take the readings. We will now place the uh, U-drop plate in the uh, multi-scan. After taking the absorbents, at 260 nanometers. So this is the formula that we will be using in order to calculate the concentration of the extracted RNA. 
an absorbance reading of 1 at 260 nanometers corresponds to around 40 microgram per ml of single stranded RNA. Therefore, in order to get the concentration of our sample, we will be multiplying the A260 absorbance reading by 40 microgram by 40, which is the standard as 1 corresponds to 40 microgram, divide and multiplying it by the factor. In this case, for this particular instrument, the factor is 20. After incubating the tubes at 37 degrees Celsius with DNA, we will then add 1 microliter of 50 millimolar EDTA. EDTA will basically sequester all the divalent cations uh, and prevent the RNA from hydrolyzing during heating at high temperatures. After uh, keeping the tubes at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, with the addition of DNA, we will now add 1 microliter of 50 millimolar EDTA. EDTA will basically sequester all the divalent cations and prevent the RNA from hydrolyzing while heating at high temperatures. So we will now add 1 microliter of 50 millimolar EDTA to our tube. After the EDTA step, we are now done with the step of genomic DNA removal. We will now proceed with the cDNA synthesis step. So the cDNA synthesis step involves the addition of the following uh, components. Of the following components, we have the oligo DT primer, reaction buffer, the ribolock RNA inhibitor, we have 10 millimolar DNTP and the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Since we are using an mRNA as a template, we are going to be using an oligo DT primer. So this, this is nothing but a stretch of thymine nucleotides which will go and bind to the poly A tail of the mRNA. We will now add these components to the tube in the following order. So we are adding the oligo DT primer, as I said, which will bind to the poly A tail of the mRNA. We will now add 4 microliter of the reaction buffer. We will then add the ribolog RNA inhibitor. Then this will basically prevent RNA activity, which will degrade, which is the enzyme that can degrade our RNA. We will then add 10 millimolar DNT.
and finally we will add the enzyme reverse transcriptase so this is the enzyme that will convert our rna template into cdna as with any experiment controls are very important and for cdna synthesis we have three important control reactions that are to be set along with your uh, sample of interest the first is the no reverse transcriptase control the no reverse transcriptase control will have all the components as described previously which will include the primer the reaction buffer the uh, ribolock rnase inhibitor the dntps your uh, uh, genomic dna removed rna template and will only not have the reverse transcriptase enzyme this control will basically test for any genomic dna contamination that can be present in our sample the second control reaction is the no template control the no template control basically will have all the components of the cdna synthesis reaction except your template dna this control will test for any contamination that is present in any of the reagents that are used for uh, the cdna synthesis the third control is the positive control with the cdna kit that we are using uh, we also get a control rna so this reaction will have all the components of the reaction mixture and instead of adding our sample as the template we will be using the control rna as a template uh, after addition of 50 millimolar edta the tubes will then be incubated at 65 degrees for 5 minutes after setting up the control as well as the sample reactions we will now be incubating our uh, sample tube the no uh, reverse transcriptase control no template control and the positive control tubes at 42 degrees for 1 hour I hope you got a glimpse of how expression studies can be done in a laboratory setup. Today we also learned the various precautions which need to be taken while handling RNA which are labile molecules for successful conversion to the cDNA. Once you have made the cDNA molecule you can store them for long time and then you can use them for PCR when you are ready to do those reactions. I hope this was a useful lab demonstration. Uh, we will continue our more concepts and discussion in the next class. Thank you.